Rogers on the punt for the Colts. Melvin Martin deep for the Hawks. Blocked. It was blocked on the play by Bates, the speedster for the Seahawks. There he is, Michael Bates. The Colts recover it at their own 40-yard line, the first time Stark has had a punt block since 1989. Now, Tom, I'm not an official, but I believe that if the punt goes beyond the line of scrimmage after the block, it doesn't matter. Well, again, I'm going to prove myself wrong. By rule, the punt was blocked behind the line of scrimmage, recover and advance from behind the line. Line to gain is first down. So the key was it was recovered behind the line by the Colts and advanced. I don't think this happened. On the 31-yard line is where it was snapped. Let's see where... That's the block by Bates. Well, I'm not going to criticize the officials until I know for sure, but that ball was recovered way past the 31-yard line. David Michaels has it ready to show who this again. This run by Marshall Falk, which nets about three or four yards. Antonio Edwards on the tackle of Falk. The rule is if the ball is recovered behind the line of scrimmage, the kicking team can advance it. But if it's recovered beyond the line of scrimmage, it just simply is like a punt, and it would be downing the football. As the Colts go to the no huddle, we'll stick with the play, and it is uh, Roosevelt pops with his first carry of the day. He gets a yard, maybe two. Tackle again by Antonio Edwards, who cut pots, and here's a quick peek at that block punt again. The 31-yard line, if I can count my stripes correctly, is where the line of scrimmage is. That thing was recovered on the 36-yard line. That's a blown call by the officials. Simply a blown call. Should have been Seattle's ball. 